Hey everyone, we're gonna try and speed run a website today. I wanna finish the whole website in, say, maybe less than 24 hours. I don't even know if this is possible, but I'm gonna build something up. We're gonna use WordPress, HTML, CSS. We're not gonna use any site builders or anything like that, and I'll time lapse the whole thing so you can see it. I'll take you through the whole process of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing the whole way through, but before we get started, make sure you hit like and subscribe, and let's just jump straight into it. The first thing I do is load up WordPress. Most websites I create are on WordPress, but I don't use any site builders. I prefer to set up all the code myself using HTML and CSS. So to kick things off, I set up the main theme file as well as pull in all the images that I'm gonna be using from the design file, which is in Adobe XD. These include things like SVGs and images and all the little shapes that might be here and there. Then I also pull in all the main fonts that I'm gonna use, whether that's from Google Fonts or whatnot. And once I'm done, I start coding out all the CSS. I usually like to do it in groups. So I start off with the home page and I just focus on the hero banner. In this hero banner, for example, I'm pulling in the main image and the background content, which is a lot of SVGs here at different levels of Z index, and all of these overlay to create a nice looking design. The framework I'm using here for CSS is actually Bootstrap. I've used this for many years, and while I know there are others out there like Tailwinds, I'm just simply more educated with all the class names right now in Bootstrap and prefer to use that. But in situations where I don't know how to do something in CSS, I just write it out manually. I also use SAS because it allows me to nest my CSS classes and makes the whole process much faster when I'm coding out a website. Adobe XD doesn't do a very good job at exporting images, so I usually open up Photoshop and export them again to make sure that the size for the images are as low as possible. Then I import them into the project. I keep a good naming convention for all the images I use because by the end of the home page I've already gone probably through 20 or 30 images. You may have noticed that the design itself is not mobile first, it's actually desktop first. And this is because a lot of the clientele that we create websites for actually do view them on the desktop first. But I do have to take into consideration the mobile version and the tablet version. So a lot of my code is already prepared to be mobile responsive. I do go back later in this section to make sure that all of it essentially folds properly at each viewport. But starting out, that can be a little bit tedious. So I usually create each section first to make sure that it's all up and running. Okay, so we're about halfway through the day and about halfway through the homepage. I haven't done the responsive design or the header yet in terms of the navigation because that's always very complicated. But I do like doing the footer and we're almost there. After we do that, we'll do the header and we'll make sure that it's all responsive too. So let's jump back into it. A lot of people might get fatigue after working too long on a website. Personally, I don't. I love every bit of coding, so for me, I can code four to eight hours straight without any breaks, but I do need to eat. Right now, what I'm doing is creating the next section here, which is the new section, and these have three different articles. Instead of doing a traditional design where we just have three exactly identical articles, one is with an image at the top, with the second in the middle or at the bottom, and the third is at the top again. So I'm gonna reuse essentially the same CSS and HTML for all of this using display flex and once it's all ready I'm literally going to copy paste each one of these sections to get all the articles ready to go I haven't dynamically linked them so I'm literally copy pasting text from Adobe XD but later on we can actually do a WP loop here and loop through different posts and pull in the titles and the descriptions and the images we're almost at the end of the website here and what we're gonna do now is have a quick section here for socials as well as some blog posts and finally do the footer Footer designs are nice and easy, but this one's got a funky element which is almost like a margin uh, top uh, with a negative amount. So this one I had to consider how I would design it, but I figured out that if I do an absolute position at the bottom, then it should be easy enough. Then I simply download a contact form from WordPress and plug that in, style it, and the footer is more or less ready to go. I do make sure that all the buttons are clickable and all the hover states and alignments are set. And once that's done, it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, that was pretty cool. Let's take a look at what we've got in terms of the design. First off, we've got the header, which I did sort of in the background because this took way longer than I thought it would be. So I sort of missed recording this, but essentially it works and I've got the responsive design working as well. So if I shrink out the window and if I try to make it bigger, it works too. The next thing is that as we go down through the design, you can see that each section sort of is more or less the same. What I've done though is that I've tried to essentially use Bootstrap with a design that doesn't exactly fit the same sort of container widths that was in the original design. This means that I sort of had to sometimes use container fluid and other times I just had to use container. And these were a little bit more dynamic but not exactly the same as Adobe XD. And this is one of the things you have to learn when you're creating at a website. 
The other part is that the design is more or less done. I completed the challenge in less than 24 hours and I'm pretty happy. Now I know that this isn't a full website. There's other pages to be done here like internal pages, contact us pages, but I don't even have the content for that. This is usually the first step so that people can start testing the website and seeing how they look and feel and if there are any changes. Then we can go in and edit and update it depending on what there is. But at least we've had a look at what it is that I normally do when I'm putting a website together. And if you have any questions or any thoughts, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.